come to see you. I always find you outside. One of my early introductions to agroforestry systems was with Jerome Mosentowski of the Central Rocky Mountain Permaculture Institute. And as a student of agroforestry himself, he was very keen on integrating nitrogen fixing woody plants, trees and shrubs into his fruit uh, and nut plantings as nurse crops you know, to help uh, support their growth provide biomass that you could be used as chop and drop mulch and then theoretically also be releasing nitrogen through their roots as they fix it in association with bacteria um, that live that form colonies or nodules on their roots and so that's something we've integrated into this planting here um, we've got a number of different species of berries laid out on berms and on the north side of the berm, so as to limit some of the shading on the, the crop, in this case, we're looking at um, honeyberry or the, an edible honeysuckle. Um, on the north side of those berms, we've planted out different nitrogen fixing species. Um, primarily, we have Siberian pea shrub, sea berry, also known as the sea buckthorn, and autumn olive. And the the plan with these is that they are really just nurse a nurse crop or a mulch crop and we put these in at kind of a haphazard spacing they're anywhere from maybe six to ten feet apart and the idea is as they start to eclipse the growth of the plants below the actual crop that we can either cut them to the ground intentionally coppicing them so that they regrow from their root system or we uh, would pollard or pollard them out in the canopy and that allows us to keep an architecture that's a little bit higher up off the ground um, but still continue to produce biomass and so we've kind of been playing with a few different techniques when it comes to how these plants are useful to us um, but in this case, with this sea berry, uh, last season we decided to pollard it by making cuts you know, out here in the canopy. And what that does is it triggers the plant to form new sprouts. And we'll probably let most of these sprouts grow for another couple seasons. You know, the size of the canopy itself is quite small, so it's really not casting that much shade on the plants in the understory. Um, but things that are forming you know, along the trunk, we can just remove. And in most cases, we just chop it and literally drop it, lay it on the soil surface. A bunch of these plants do have some pretty aggressive thorns though, which can be a challenge, um, but they're so small, there's not really much else that, that we can do with them. So we're just providing some free woody mulch that we've grown right here on site. And also, from what I understand, by cutting back the plant, that will stimulate a certain degree of dieback of the roots. At least I imagine the fine root hairs of the plant. And so we do get a little bit more of that carbon release in the soil as well. And so, you know, here we're looking at this sea berry that's putting on some really nice growth. I should mention also that this is a male sea berry. Um, we planted out unsexed sea berries. And so we've left the females to grow to full size and pruned them and the males have been the ones that we've selected for this sort of chop and drop treatment. Um, we've got some really nice um, Siberian pea shrub which have been amazing fodder for bumblebees um, but it's also just this beautiful pea-shaped flower um, could be good fodder for chickens. Um, and then we've got things like the autumn olive which are growing a bit more thicket-like. The other species that we've incorporated here is autumn olive. And I will note that you do want to be aware of the potential for plants to kind of escape and begin to colonize ecosystems where they aren't already introduced. With a species like this, I'm a lot less concerned about it because it already is part of the kind of wild landscape here. Um, but something like an autumn olive produces really healthy, nutritious fruit for people. Um, but it's also a nitrogen-fixing plant. 
that you know, we manage just by cutting it to ground level every three to five years or so, and then using that biomass again as mulch. But some of the neat rewards that come from having some of these um, you know, varied architectures of plants in is when we start to see you know, the benefits to habitat for wildlife as well. When we made our beds, we gonna raise that veg. We let the chickens out when we've laid